Thank you for joining us here this morning for our New Hampshire Give uh, workshop and training. Uh, my name is Kathleen Reardon. I am the CEO of the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits, uh, and we're delighted to be bringing you um, this special day of giving and hope uh, that you will all participate. Um, we created this, or we decided to facilitate this giving day for a couple of reasons. One is it's an opportunity to bring visi greater visibility to all of the amazing work that nonprofits are doing across the state by bringing everyone together to celebrate nonprofits and show their supports in various ways. And secondly, uh, the, the day will provide you some tools and techniques um, to enhance your ability to do online fundraising and support social media efforts. We all know that online fundraising is a growing um, area of interest. People are interested in uh, giving in this way, and it is one area that is growing faster than other individuals giving. Um, so it's a real great opportunity for everyone to get on board with this. Uh, the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits, uh, as our role, is obviously we're, we're bringing together some training and working um, on this. We've, we've worked with GiveGab, who's the platform, and you'll be hearing more from them. Uh, we selected GiveGab because of the tools and resources that they provide. The platform that participating nonprofits will participate in um, has a lot of tools and resources, which we'll be discussing later on in this day. But, but uh, they also have a lot of expertise in this Giving Days um, area. So we thought they were a great partner in that aspect. The center is also uh, pursuing sponsorships for the day overall, which will provide uh, giving incentives for the day. You'll hear more about that later on in the campaign um, after you've signed up. Um, and we are also working on securing media sponsors and we'll be promoting visibility of this state. So what we've learned as we've studied giving days is that having that kind of consumer visibility provides great uh, benefits to have a campaign for all nonprofits to participate in. So we're very excited to be performing this or participating in this as well and hope that this day is successful for all of you and your objectives. So just a couple of technical things. Um, if you have a question, there is a question box to ask um, questions. And uh, we will be stopping various times during the presentation to, um, to present questions. Um, so type them in whenever you want. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to our friends at GiveGab. Thank you so much, Kathleen. Um, so yes, my name is Alyssa Ravenel. I'm the Customer Success Manager here at GiveGab, and I'm joined with my colleague, Bridget. Hi, everyone. I'm Bridget Cafaro, and I'm a Customer Success Rep here at GiveGab. So first, I just want to talk really quickly about who is GiveGab. So yes, GiveGab is the tech platform behind uh, New Hampshire Gives. Um, we're also the nonprofit giving platform to help you fundraise um, all year round and engage with your donors um, after New Hampshire Gives, if you so choose. Um, so the structure of today, we're going to um, go through this presentation really quickly, hopefully, um, and jump right into the demo, which is the more exciting part about exactly how you get signed up. Um, and just to know, if you do follow along with us in the demo and you do sign up, um, this is a real profile that will be on New Hampshire Gifts, um, but you are not required to participate if after the fact you don't want to. Um, you only are fully participating if you add in that bank account information, which we'll be going over with you um, later in the presentation. So again, we're going to go over really quickly just four basic things, you know, why should you participate, which Kathleen touched upon, um, and then of course how to steps to register and be successful. A really quick snapshot about what campaigns are and how they can help your organization. And of course, just five things you should know about GiveGab. So of course, um, you know, day of giving, um, as Kathleen mentioned, it's a 24-hour online fundraising event that really unites a community or a state around local causes. And it really helps, you know, having all these voices come together at once really leverages the marketing power of all of you together, of all of New Hampshire nonprofits, um, to really speak about who you are as a, as a state, who you are as a nonprofit sector, and really encourage those donors and supporters to support you. Um, and of course, it's, that also ties into why you should participate. I mean, you can, with all this marketing power around with everyone in the nonprofit sector in New Hampshire participating, you can really raise a lot more awareness and money for your organization in a single day. You can attract and find new donors um, and volunteers, and of course, you know, build your community, um, learn this new online fundraising platform in a really easy way, um, and just kind of generate some excitement for New Hampshire. 
And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Bridget to talk about you know, the five simple steps you need to do to participate. Great. Thanks, Alyssa. So there are five simple steps that you need to complete in order to participate in uh, New Hampshire Gives. And that first is, of course, to register for New Hampshire Gives. And you're going to do that on nhgives.org. The second will be to customize your profile, and that you're going to do on GiveGab. Next, you're going to enter in your bank account information so you can receive your donations, and you're going to do that on GiveGab as well. Next, you're going to plan, and five, you're going to promote, promote, promote. And I'm going to go over all these steps in a little detail now. So with that first step, register. So when you get on to nhgives.org, you'll see that big register now button. If you click that button, you should be able to search for your organization. Now, if your organization is already on GiveGab, you may see them listed. But if you're not on GiveGab yet, that's no problem. You'll want to click that Add My Organization button down at the bottom. After you click that, you'll just want to add some basic information about your organization, um, as well as create um, your GiveGab account. So adding your name, uh, your email address, and your password is how you'll access your GiveGab account and be able to edit your New Hampshire Gives page. So once you've finished button, you'll be taken uh, to your admin dashboard, which we'll go over in the demo in a little bit. But there you'll want to customize your profile. And here you'll see we have a space for your tagline, information about your organization, a spot for your logo, as well as a background image for your New Hampshire Give page. You'll also see that there's a section for you to select several causes that you think best represent your organization. Donors will be able to search by cause um, to find organizations that you know, may interest them. This also comes into play for our easy repeat giving feature on the day of. And I'll go over that in a little bit more detail later. So here's an example of what your New Hampshire Gives profile will look like. There you see your logos right up at the top along with your uh, organization name and tagline right above that donate button. Now remember, your donate button will only appear on your New Hampshire Gives, Gives page after you've added your bank account information and you're verified to accept donations, which I'll go over in the next slide and in the demo as well. You'll see under that that there's your background image, that information about your organization, and if you would have causes, they would be under that About Us headline as well. And you'll see under that is where you'll be able to view any fundraising campaigns that you may be running. And we'll go over that again later as well. So the next step is to add your bank account information. So we ask that you add information um, about your organization, um, information from an organization representative, as well as the bank account information where we will direct deposit those donations directly into your bank account. So you won't have to wait for a check to get those donations. And you'll see once you've added that bank account information, you should see this green little verified um, mark on your page. Um, it typically takes about you know, two to three days, um, but if you don't see it after that, let us know and we'll see what's going on. But you should see that green verify button once you're all set. So step four is to plan. You know, the day is you know, coming up and there's a lot you can do to kind of prepare and plan for how you're going to um, really promote this day and make it successful for your organization. We have a lot of really great resources for you on nhgives.org in the nonprofit toolkit. There you'll be able to find a planning workbook with um, checklists of all the things you should be completing before the day to make sure you're prepared, as well as the communications timeline so you can know when you should be reaching out to your supporters to let them know that you're participating in the day. Again, in that nonprofit toolkit on nhgives.org, we also have some really great tools for you to promote that you're participating in the day. So from email marketing guides and templates to sample social media posts and tips, as well as any downloadable content like logos or um, any handouts that we give out during our presentations, as well as the webinars themselves, you'll be able to view um, afterwards in that download section. Perfect. Thank you so much, Bridget. Um, so I'm going to quickly go over what a campaign is. Um, so a campaign, you can see here, this is the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits campaign for their scholarship fund. And that's that campaign that we saw back on that sample profile page. 
So a fundraising campaign, again, is not required to participate in New Hampshire Gifts, but we do highly encourage it. It really helps you set up a specific campaign for a specific initiative you're trying to fund. It can really help tell your story a little bit further um, beyond just that small about us section. So this is what a sample campaign looks like. And I'll show you in the demo just really quickly how you can start that campaign and we can send along some resources after and how to complete it. So we don't have enough time today, unfortunately, to go through the whole process. Um, you can see here, you know, it's, it has some more photos on the page as well as some donation buttons. And what's not shown here is another story. Um, a bit of a longer story, you can add photos and things like that to talk about the campaign even further. The other advantage of having a campaign is the ability to recruit fundraising champions. So fundraising champions are those peer-to-peer -peer, um, people that are going to help fundraise on your behalf. Um, so this here is Deborah Clark's fundraiser. So she, again, she is fundraising for New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits, specifically for their scholarship fund. So it's going to pull in all that information from your campaign, as well as a personal reason as to why she's specifically fundraising. It's also a bit more personal because it has you know, their, their own photos, their name, and of course their own personal um, images to why they're fundraising for this specific campaign. Again, again, we won't be going too much into this, but I will show you exactly how you can get that set up, and we'll send out some more resources after. And then, of course, the last part of our um, presentation, you know, five things you should know about GiveGap. Um, we have simple and transparent pricing. We're mobile responsive. We're fully customizable. We have easy repeat giving. And we have those immediate personalized thank yous. So first, simple and transparent pricing. We um, charge a per donation fee, 2.7% plus 30 cents um, for the credit card processing fee and 5% for the GiveGab platform fee, which is capped at $20 per transaction. Keep in mind, there are no monthly costs, no subscription, no hidden fees. The only cost you'll see on GiveGab is that per donation cost. In addition, donors are given the option to cover those costs. You know, between 70 to 80% of donors opt in to cover them. So they actually will see the, the fees laid out, and they will click on a button to say, yes, I will cover those fees for the nonprofit. We see um, nonprofits, you know, see those intended donations come through pretty often, which is really awesome that the donors, you know, are opting in to cover them for you. Next, for mobile responses. So again, this is a New Hampshire Gives site on a smaller browser. So as it, you're going to see it stretch in and out a little bit, you're going to see how the, as the site um, changes shape. And this is really important because on the day of, people are going to probably be giving on their mobile phones, and it's really important to have, you know, this mobile responsive feature. So this is just an, um, showing you a little bit of how it's going to look. Next, we're fully customizable. So this is a profile from an um, organization in Minnesota, but they really have taken this fully customizable aspect. Um, and so you can see they have their logo up there. They have their own colors. They have all their own photos. And again, when you, do, when you create your New Hampshire Gives profile, it'll also be reflected on your GivesGab profile. So it's almost like you're telling two birds with one stone, making sure you can customize your New Hampshire Gives profile and if you choose to use GiveGap after, it'll already be set up as well. Um, fourth, we have easy repeat giving. So as Bridget mentioned before with the causes, this is where this is going to come into play. So after I support an organization, say Food Bank of America, it's going to give me a thank you message after that. Again, after I've made that organization, after I made that donation to that organization. It gives me other suggestions for causes to support. And again, this is based on the causes. So maybe I've given to Food Bank of America and my, the other causes um, you know, around maybe food scarcity is going to be you know, Food Bank of um, Southern New Hampshire or you know, the, the, food, the soup kitchen, something like that, because they all share the same cause. And it really helps your organization to get your name out there um, in addition to helping other organizations. So that's one aspect of the repeat giving. The other aspect is on this side. So, New Hampshire Gives will actually save the donor's credit card information for about 20 minutes after their first donation. So all they have to do, oops, all they have to do is come in, enter an amount up here, and you can see they have all the donor information down here as well as the email address. They can of course change it if they want using a different card, but it makes it really easy where all you have to do is enter in an amount and hit go and the donation is made a second time. Um, if a donor does close the browser, the information is lost, so they'll have to enter it again. But again, that's for that for the safety and security of our donor's information. And last, we have immediate personalized thank yous. So every donor that makes a donation to your organization on New Hampshire Gives is going to get a personalized thank you. It does not come from GiveGab. It does not come from New Hampshire Gives. It comes from your organization. Whoever you set as that contact person on your organization is going to get is going to be sending these emails. Um, 
through the GiveGab platform. And again, it's automatic. And again, this can be customized. So you have, you know, this great thank you image over here, this great thank you message, and a donation receipt. So kind of, so again, it kills two birds with one stone, including that thank you and that um, and that receipt with your EIN in there. You know, it takes away that immediacy for you to have to do that thank you. Um, of course, you want to thank your donors, you know, two or three times after that again. But again, when you are receiving, you know, hundreds of donations on that one day, you're not going to want to send out a donation receipt. You know, every that's all you'll be doing all day long, and that's not what we want you to be doing. And so with that, that was the presentation part of the uh, webinar. We're going to jump over into the demo. Um, so next step is demo, obviously. Um, sign up for New Hampshire Gives. Like and follow the New Hampshire Gives and New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits on Facebook and Twitter. Um, and this is important so you can get uh, keep up with the date. And then watch your inbox for important emails. So again, we're, we've been sending out emails, but we'll be sending out emails about some other steps that need to take to success. Um, we actually had a question come in. I'm going to jump back to the um, to the thank you email real quick. Um, so is the amount on the thank you email, the total donation the amount going to the organization after the fees? So this is the amount um, of the intended donation. So it's the amount going to the organization after the fees or the to or their total donation. So it's whatever they intended to give. So if I intended to give $25, that's the amount that's going to show up on my donation receipt. All right. So I'm going to jump right into New Hampshire Gives. I'm going to pick that out of this. Okay. All right. So I'm going to get nhgives.org. And again, if you all want to follow along and sign up for your nonprofit for New Hampshire Gives, this is the part where you're going to follow along. So newhampshiregives.org. I'm going to scroll down to show you a little bit about the site. So, you know, we have that big register now button. We have, you know, the organizations participating in New Hampshire Gives. We're, we're over 100 at this point, which is very exciting. Hope to see that number grow even more. You know, have about New Hampshire Gives, how to spread the word, um, who's behind it, and, of course, all the supporters behind New Hampshire Gives. I'm jump, going to jump back up to the top, though. I'm going to click on Register Now. I'm going to search for my organization. My organization's name is Logan's Pups. I'm going to click search. You know what? Nothing is matching my organization's name, so I'm going to come down and click add my organization. All right, again, enter my organization's name, Logan's Pups, my address in Gosstown, New Hampshire. Yes, I am a New Hampshire, um, a native New Hampshire in. I am from Gosstown, New Hampshire. I'm wondering if there are any other people from Gosstown in the audience. I hope there are. All right, so Gosstown, New Hampshire, 0045. Now there's this option to um, add a logo. I'm not going to add a logo right now because I'm going to show you after. And also, what it's not asking you to do is create a login. I'm already a GiveGab user, but if you are not a GiveGab user, you're going to create a login with, again, your first and last name, your email address, and that password to log in to GiveGab to edit your New Hampshire Gives profile. So I'm going to go ahead and click Save, and here we are. So I am in GiveGab Logan's Pups, and I'm actually I'm in our new dashboard. I'm going to switch back to our old dashboard because I think that's what everyone else will land on. So here we are in our old dashboard. So you see you have some tabs along the top, some steps down here, and some organization tools over here. What we're going to focus on today is providing bank information for donations and how to customize your profile. The first thing is, again, provide bank info for donations. We're going to add in our legal business name, our tax ID, our mailing address. So that first address that you put on the other page, that doesn't have to be your mailing address if you don't want. That can be your physical location if they are different. Um, mine, happen to be, mine happens to be the same. And an email address. Next, I'm going to add in my organization representative information. I'm going to pause here because I know some people can get antsy about asking for this information. We need this information to follow the U.S. Patriot Act. Um, and this is important um, because, again, it's the U.S. Patriot Act, and they require that we report on which organizations are raising money online. The simplest way to put it is that we need to make sure that the organization representing this, this organization is a legitimate person and that this organization is a legitimate organization. 
it's to help um, avoid funding on organizations that aren't allowed to receive donations. So that's why we have to ask for this information. Um, we use an underwriter, a third-party underwriter, that helps us verify this information with the IRS. Um, and so that's kind of why we need that information. If you have any questions about that or would like some more documentation around that, please reach out to us. We have a ton of information about this, um, and we have to clear some things up. Of course, thanking information. Oops, don't have letters in there. Of course, this is fake information, so I'm not going to hit save. But when you do hit save, you're going to get that screen where so the organization um, is verified like we showed in the demo. We're going to click save, and it's going to be all set. I'm going to go back, back to our admin dashboard. So we have provide, so imagine that this is crossed out because we already did that. The next one to come in to customize our profile. And I'm going to pause real quick um, to answer some of these questions. I think we said we we're going to answer them throughout the presentation. Um, do organizations get a CSV file with the donor information? Yes, they do. Um, you can export that donation CSV whenever you'd like. Um, it's going to have you know, donor information, their um, email address, and then their actual full address if you choose to collect that. And are there real-time updates throughout the day? Yes, updates will be in made in real time. Um, as, we reach, as we reach New Hampshire Give goals, so as we reach overall goals, we'll be celebrating them. But of course, as you reach your own personal goals, definitely celebrate them with your supporters, with your donors, with um, on social media, because it is a very exciting time. And of course, there are prizes throughout mm -hmm. the day. So as you, you know, <clears throat> raise more money and you know, have more donors, there's definitely opportunities to win those prizes and celebrate those prizes, because usually it means that you've done some good work for your organization. All right. So I'm going to jump back into um, setting up our organization. So again, I'm going to customize your profile for Logan Pup. I happen to have all my information already typed up. So I'm going to grab Logan's Pup, um, our tagline. And then I'm going to add in about my organization. I'm going to then upload our logo. So I have this great logo over here. And you can see right now, this is only choosing you know, a small part of my photo. I don't want that. I want to get as much as I can of this adorable little pup. You can see here, I've grabbed the corners and I'm stretching it out. And once I got to the size I want, I can then grab the square and move it around. Again, the logo does have to be a square. There we go. I'm going to hit apply. So if you don't see the apply, just make sure you scroll down. I'm going to hit apply. And I'm going to add a cover photo. Again, I click on Select Image, click Select Cover Photo, I'm going to open it up. And I'm going to grab that corner, go like this, just like how much I want. And you don't have to do the whole thing, you know, just like a certain part. And come down like this. I'm going to hit Apply. Okay, then select your causes. So again, these causes come into play with that easy repeat giving that we have. So I'm going to choose animals, obviously, because I'm an animal organization. I'm also going to choose seniors because our organization aims to um, pair senior animals with senior um, people. So I'm going to go ahead and choose those two causes. Again, you can cause, uh, sorry, you can choose up to three causes. I'm going to choose two because again, those are the causes that really relate to my organization. I'm going to hit save, and there we are. So yeah, you can see that this is now crossed out. Um, as we come down here, we now see this great little thing, Days of Giving, because again, we signed up for New Hampshire Gifts. And I'm going to view our page. Now again, this is your portal to get between GiveGab and New Hampshire Give. You want to click on this button. I'm now looking at my Logan Fox page. So you can see I have this great logo and about us, about New Hampshire Gives. And if I have a fundraising campaign, again, that's going to be added right below the About Us. You also might be noticing that I don't have my donate button. Again, this is because I have not added my bank account information. Once you add that, um, once you add that and are verified by GiveGap and by Stripe, you're going to have that donate button show up. Now to get back into GiveGap, all you need to do is click Manage this on GiveGap. And you're already back into your admin dashboard. Keep in mind, if you're not logged into GiveGap though, you're going to have to log in first, and then it will take you to your GiveGab platform, your GiveGab dashboard. 
So I'll do that one more time. Again, I'm in GiveGab. I want to go to my New Hampshire Gives page. I click on Do Your Page. I come up here. I'm like, oh, great. And I'm going to go click on Manage This on GiveGab again. So, you know, that's, again, that's the portal between the two sites. Make sure you can really get that set up. All right, so I'm going to jump over now to the fundraising page real quick. So, again, I touched on campaigns very briefly. I just want to show you where you can do that. So, again, I was in the Overview tab. I went click on the Fundraising tab, and that's what we're doing. I'm going to click Start a Campaign. I'm going to add in some basic information, the campaign title, the tagline, a goal, um, a launch and end date. If you want peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, um, and keep in mind, do not, don't title your campaign New Hampshire Gives. Make sure your campaign title really speaks about what your campaign is about. Um, so make sure you um, definitely put that in the campaign title. And we have resources on all this information um, that I can send out after. So once you're done, you want to click on Create Campaign. You'll be brought to a much more robust campaign editor where you can add your story, you can add those images, you can add all those different colors um, to really make it feel like your campaign. I'm going to head back out there. Yeah. So we're going to pause. So after I set up all my whole profile, I'm going to pause and answer some of those questions that have come in um, and see what we have to do. Um, so as a question, you know, someone already has a donation platform that they use. Um, is there a way to participate in New Hampshire Gives without having to sign up for a whole new platform? Um, to actively participate in New Hampshire Gives, you do need to sign up with New Hampshire Gives. Um, it's up to you, though, if you do direct people to New Hampshire Gives to collect those donations. Um, you can add in offline donations. Um, it has not been decided yet, though, if those offline donations will be acceptable um, in terms of prizes. So we do always encourage everyone to come on through New Hampshire Gives to be really eligible for everything that New Hampshire Gives has to offer. Um, someone already uses Stripe. Do you have to sign up? Do you have to provide additional information when registering for this giving plan? Um, yes. So the way that we have Stripe, if you already have your own Stripe account, it's going to be different than this Stripe account. Um, what you have um, with this account is called a managed account. So GiveGab will actually do all of the management behind this Stripe account for you. So yes, you do need that second account because that's how we, it kind of works with our um, payment processor and our, our payment provider through the API with someone using technical language. Um, but you do need another Stripe account. Um, another question about um, the price of, whoops, price of the platform and price per donation. I'd be happy to go over that. Come down to our pricing page. So again, our pricing is simple. Um, it's 5% for the GiveGab platform fee, and that's a per donation fee, again, cap at $20. And the credit card fee is 2.7% plus 30 cents. And again, donors are given the option to cover that fee, so it does drop that fee down much, um, much lower than that. Um, we had a question, what's the benefit of setting up a campaign? So a campaign is really important um, to set up to um, fund a specific initiative. So if you have a specific um, idea in mind for a, um, for a campaign, like, well, so for example, I have Logan's Pups. I need to set up, I need to build a new dog kennel. I'm going to set up a specific campaign to build this specific dog kennel. And that's why I would have a specific campaign, because it really can help me tell my story a lot more than if I was to have that small about us on the page. Um, it can also really influence donors to give um, certain amounts um, to some of those donation tiers. And you can also have fundraising champions, those peer-to-peer -peer, um, champions that are going to help you um, raise funds on, their, on your behalf. OK, I think we answered all those questions. We're going to jump back into the um, New Hampshire Gives website um, really quick so that we can show you um, some of the other tools that are in New Hampshire Gives. Again, I'm going to go back to our admin dashboard and get to New Hampshire Gives through GiveGab, and click on Zoom our page. And go ahead and click on the New Hampshire Gives logo up top here. This is how I get back to New Hampshire Gives. I'm going to have Bridget take us through the nonprofit toolkit. Great, thanks, Alyssa. So um, right on the top of that New Hampshire Gives page, you'll see that nonprofit toolkit. If you click on that, you'll be taken to this page with all of those resources that I mentioned earlier, as well as those steps to get started. So you'll see in the prepare and promote section, we have this great planning workbook that you can use and even download as a PDF if you kind of wanted to print it out and check off as you go and follow the steps. Um, so it gives you some ideas of you know, best practices for how to engage with your board, use social media, things like that. 
um, so that you really know what kind of ground you need to cover to be successful on the day of. And again, we break it down, you know, seven weeks out, six weeks out, so you really have an idea of what you should be focusing on, focusing on excuse me, each week before New Hampshire gives. Um, and you can just check these off as you go, which makes it really easy to make sure that you've covered all your bases, because we want you to feel prepared and excited. Back in that nonprofit toolkit, we also have a communications timeline, which just gives you an idea of when you should be reaching out to your supporters to let them know that you're participating in this day, and just gives you some tips for how to do that um, and when to do that, which can be really helpful because we're all really busy and it can be hard to find time, um, you know, to put this into you know your already busy fundraising schedule. So this kind of breaks it down for you. So you really just have to schedule those based on that. Here we have some email marketing guides. Um, which you can also download as a Word document so you can use these sample templates. So you'll see um, we just have some information about email marketing that you can use, um, as well as, I believe they're down here, yep, um, these great email templates. So you can literally copy and paste these emails, um, you know, just changing some more specific information to make it more suitable to your organization and your mission, um, and send those right out to your supporters, which is a really great tool, and it's really time-saving when you don't have time to sit down and write a lot of these emails. So you can absolutely use these templates um, to reach out to those people and let them know about New Hampshire Gives. Down here, we also have some sample social media posts. Again, you can just copy and paste these right into your Twitter or Facebook, um, just changing some information, making it more personal, more about your organization. And if your organization doesn't already have a social media presence, now is definitely the time you're going to want to start to build that. With online giving, social media can play a really huge role in how you find new donors and how your current donors engage with your organization. So, you know, you're definitely going to want to post the links to your New Hampshire Gives page on Twitter, on Facebook, wherever you are on social media so that your supporters know that you're participating. And you can definitely use these messages to do that. We also have some social media tips. So if you are new to social media, it's not really your thing, we have some really great tips to help you understand, you know, how to use it to your benefit and how to really use it to, um, <laughs> <laughs> your organization's um, participation in the day. So again, it's really simple. We want to make sure that you have the tools to be successful. And lastly, there's that downloadable goodies section. So here you'll be able to find the logo and all different forms which you can use for any promotional materials that your organization is using to promote New Hampshire Gives, as well as Facebook and Twitter cover photos, which are great. Um, you know, when you get closer to the day, you want to change out your cover photo to that New Hampshire Gives logo. So that all of your friends know that, you know, this is a day that's important to you and your organization. You know, they'll probably start seeing them all over the place, you know, with the state giving day. That's a lot of people um, for you, um, you know, to reach out to. So just seeing that, you know, cover photo everywhere can really have a lot of impact. So you'll definitely want to change that up as you get closer to the day. We also have some more promotional resources, like a planning workbook, what I mentioned earlier. So you can download all of those there and print them out if you'd like as well as some more educational resources that we hand out during our, um, our workshops. I want to point out, Rose, it's on this downloads page. So I didn't go into detail again on creating that fundraising campaign or peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers. There again, in the educational resource section, there's five steps to campaign success and harnessing, harnessing the power of fundraising champions. Again, just make sure you reference the educational resources. Um, to make sure you, you know, are getting the right resources. And if you ever need any extra help, we have this great little chat bubble you'll see in the top, of the, sorry, the bottom right-hand corner. And if you click on that, you'll be able to chat, there's my face right there, with a member of our customer success team. We're always really good about responding. Um, during business hours, our meeting response time is about five minutes. Uh, sometimes less than that. So we'll always get back to you really quickly and make sure that, you know, if you have any questions or need any help on the platform, that we're there for you and that you really have those resources to be successful. So please use that chat. And if you are on the Day of Giving website, make sure to add your email address so that we know to contact uh, who to contact. Otherwise, you know, unless you visit that page again, it'll kind of just go into the blank space. And we want to make sure that we answer all your questions. So make sure to add your email address to that page. All right, thanks, Richard. And I want to quickly go run over to the workshop page. So this, again, this is our our, for our only webinar. We're going to have another workshop on May 11th. We may go into more promotional um, details on that workshop as well as getting ready. But I do want to just point out that other option to learn more about the day of giving as well. 
All right. So that concludes our presentation. So we're going to go over to questions right now. Um, so feel free to send them in, and we will answer as many as we can before 11. So the question, um, do we have any recommendations about fundraising targets? Um, it's definitely a personal decision about fundraising targets. We have a really great blog article to help you work through that decision um, about you know, how much should you raise. It's the, first, it's the first given day. It might be your first time online fundraising. So it can definitely be a different process of setting that fundraising goal. So we'll send that resource over to you um, about different recommendations. And on your New Hampshire Kids profile, you don't have to set a specific goal. You know, if you make a campaign, you know, you're going to want to have a goal. But if you're just participating in New Hampshire Kids and don't have a campaign, you don't have to set a specific goal that you need to benchmark throughout the day. You, know, you're, you can still just support and watch those donations come in and see how you do. Another question, does it show real time giving totals to your organization on your profile for everyone to see? It does. As you make a donation on um, New Hampshire Gives, that total will be uploaded. I think it's, it's on a minute delay, so it's not, it's not fully real time. You know, a minute is not that long to wait. Um, so as you, as you make that donation, it will show up. In addition, um, leaderboards will also be on the day of doing, you know, promote some, sort of promote some friendly competition between organizations. Um, and it will, again, show your organization on the front page of how much you've raised as well. Um, and I do want to just touch again, again on the fundraising champion. So New Hampshire Gives um, team has actually put together some resources to send over to your fundraising champions. And it's not fully finished yet, but we have worked on a whole page um, just to kind of educate your fundraising champions um, on how to be a fundraising champion, how they can really support you. And again, this is if you have a fundraising campaign or not. So of course, there's a, there's a formal way to be a fundraising champion, which is again, through that way that Deborah from New Hampshire Center has set up that, you know, that beautiful page with her photos and her story. But if you don't want to have set up a campaign, you can still have fundraising champions. You know, maybe bring them together and be like, hey, this is our profile. Can you make sure you send out, you know, five emails on the day of with this link in it? Um, and maybe post to Facebook a couple times. Again, it doesn't have to be a formal process like we have on the site. You can just have fundraising champions um, that are going to help you out. And I think, uh, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, no. Yeah, and I just think, you know, if you're, you know, you don't know who your fundraising champions can be. You know, your board members make really great fundraising champions, some of your best volunteers. Those people that really care about your mission and are really invested in what you're doing at your organization usually make the best fundraising champions because they want you to be successful and they want to, you know, fundraise on your behalf and make sure that they're furthering your mission. So those are some really great people to reach out to if you're not sure, you know, who, to, who will fundraise on your behalf. And I want to touch on, so someone here has to know what's the benefit of having that campaign. Um, I think another benefit was definitely to expand your donor base. Because when you have a campaign and you have those formal fundraising champions, they're the ones who are going to go out and find you new donors because they're reaching out to their personal network. So, you know, if, if I have, you know, me and my, my five board members and they each have their own list that I have never contacted, you know, if, and um, they're going to reach out to those people. And we see on average about four new donors per fundraising champion. So if you have four, sorry, if you have five fundraising champions each reaching out and getting four new donors, that's 20 new donors that took you in a day to get. Um, so that's another benefit of having that um, fundraising campaign. Um, can you set participation in dollar fundraising goals? So um, externally, you can only set a dollar fundraising goal. Um, Sorry, one. Um, so external, you can only set dollar fundraising goals. So on that campaign, you're going to set, um, say, like a dollar amount. But internally, you can set participation goals. Um, so on a campaign, you have a whole bunch of other metrics besides just you know how much you've raised. You can measure um, how many new donors you have, how many repeat donors do you have, um, what percentage has covered that fee, um, and a couple and a few other metrics that can really help you set other goals. There's actually an email that will be going out um, sometime in the next couple of weeks that are going to explain you know, all the different things as to why you want a fundraising campaign and all the different things that you can set goals around for that. Um, and someone just asked, you know, who can be a fundraising champion? I hope we answered that question for you. If not, you know, please reach out to us again. Like um, questions have slowed down a little bit. Um, again, I want to point out one more time. You know, this great little blue button down here in the bottom corner. 
that if you have any questions, whether you're on GiveGab or on the New Hampshire Give site, reach out to us. You'll probably get Bridget, myself, or Casey. Um, sometimes Jay is another person that will jump in, and they'll be able to answer a lot of your questions. And again, that's on the New Hampshire Give site, and it's the same color right here on the GiveGab platform, right down here in the corner. And there's the New Hampshire Give, uh, sorry, the GiveGab team um, right up top there. Hi, Lisa. This is Deborah Clark from the center. Um, I wanted to know if you could um, take a gander at the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits profile and campaign. What some of the differences are in um, what you can present more of your organization from the campaign view than you can from the profile view. So if you can take a look at those and, and kind of contrast and compare what you can do on each, that would be really great. Yeah, of course. So I'm going to again. Um, Go into, to get to the profile, this is a, a little sneaky way I have to find the profile, but I'll make sure I find it quickly. New Hampshire Center. Okay. So this is New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits profile on New Hampshire Give. As you can see again, you can see that logo up top here, on the, uh, the nonprofit's name and the donate button. And you can't donate until the day of, um, so that's not going to be turned on yet. And about us, and that's, that's pretty much it on the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits page. It definitely gives a very brief um, description of the organization. It doesn't really give all that detail that some people might want to see. So we come down to the fundraising campaigns, we click on View Campaign, we have a bit more information over here. So we have the title of the campaign, um, some great photos, again, the donate button not turned on yet. Um, and then this is the percent raised, so this is going to show you you know, um, the goal and how much is raised. We have these great donation tiers. So donation tiers are those um, buttons that you can choose um, to kind of tell your donors how much um, they should be giving and how much their money is almost not ripped to your organization, but how much it can help your organization out. Um, so, you know, $25 can provide a 50% uh, scholarship for one person to attend a three-hour workshop. But, you know, it might upsell me because if I can, you know, $25 you're going to get 50%, why not just donate and give the whole thing if I have the money to spend? Um, so it can really definitely influence your donors um, when you have those donation tiers. And again, this is only available when you have a fundraising campaign. Then down here, of course, is the, um, the story, the campaign story. Kind of tells a little bit about more why you're fundraising on the, for the scholarships or for your campaign. These great photos in here. Some great testimonials. That's a great thing to add into your campaign is testimonials or personal stories. And then down here is the button to start fundraising. Um, this does not come standard on your campaign, so if you do want to include that, um, we can explain to you. We're going to write up a quick little guide on how to do this as well. Um, it's really easy, but we want to make sure that everyone has that option to have that start fundraising button on their page. Because when I click on it, Take me to, to give GiveGab to help um, New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits um, and help fundraise on their behalf. So again, the main difference is that you can add a lot more details, a lot more personality to these fundraising campaigns and really influence your donors a little bit more than on your About Us page. Um, and what it's not showing here also are, you know, recent donors. So it is going to show their recent donors and the amounts that they um, donated to your organization. So I got a question, no, please explain again how to get champions to get your word out. So again, champions are just, are, think of them as people that really care about your organization that can really help you fundraise. So it might be, um, it might be your board member. So actually we just had a, a meeting with, one, with a board um, last night with a local organization to have a fundraising party or a fundraising champion party. We showed them how to sign up to be a fundraising champion and um, what they need to do to get the word out. So this is something that you could do for your organization as well. Um, just kind of pull together a quick little party, maybe have some snacks. Um, they had they had some dinner for everyone, maybe have some snacks. Um, and kind of explain to them, you know, we need you to do this. We have this email timeline, send out these four emails, you know, this, 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 and this. And then that's how they had their fundraising champions. It didn't take all that long, maybe it took them two hours. Um, and they were ready to go and they had eight people fundraising on their behalf just for that little party. Um, so once signed into this platform, can we begin directing online donors here prior to New Hampshire Gift Day? So the answer is yes. 
you can direct people to your profile before New Hampshire Gives Day. They won't be able to donate yet, though. Again, the donate button is not going to be turned on um, until closer to the date. Um, but if you wanted to use, if you had like you know, maybe an idea for a campaign now, um, or something like that, or you just wanted to get more involved or more familiar with the platform, you can definitely go on and use GiveGab. You can always collect donations on GiveGab. It's not going to show up, unfortunately, because again, I don't have my donate my banking information. But you will have a big donate button over here. I would though. I wouldn't send people directly there right now. I would probably hold off and maybe use New Hampshire Gives Day as your launch to the world and say, hey, we're now doing online fundraising through New Hampshire Gives First, but then we're going to be transitioning over to do fundraising through this platform. Because yes, you can continue to use GiveGab um, and New Hampshire Gives after the day of. Um, we're still working with, with the New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits on different ways on how New Hampshire Gives is going to work after the day. Um, but there's definitely um, ways you can use both um, after June 7th. Question about embedding videos. So you can embed a video, um, but only if you have a fundraising campaign. Again, only a fundraising campaign on New Hampshire Gives, and it's going to be, locate, be located right up here. Keep in mind it has to be a YouTube or Vimeo video to be uploaded, and all you need to do is grab a video link and place it right in there. Again, it can only be on fundraising campaigns, so it won't be on that about us which is, again, another reason why you might want to have a fundraising campaign. Donors have an option to be listed as anonymous. Yes. Um, so if I was to donate and I wanted to be anonymous, I can just check a box, make me anonymous, and my amount will show up, but my name won't. Um, of course, you will have that donor's information in your CSV export, but it will not be shown um, to the world. Um, the workshop on May 11th is going to have very, very similar information I, um, on May 11th. I'm not sure where that one's going to be. New Hampshire Center, can you jump in here with the location? It is, it's going to be at the New Hampshire Audubon Society. It looks like out in Concord, New Hampshire. Yeah. Okay. All right. If there are any other questions, you know, please go ahead and send them on. We have about you know, 10 more minutes or so. We'll be happy to answer anything that you have. I'm going to quickly then show you this is support article page. So if you ever if you need more help, you know, step-by-step -step help, our support articles have exactly everything you need to do to get ready. If you focus on these top three, you'll have your entire profile ready before June 7th. And if you want to start or customize that campaign, that's going to be right down here. And I'll add in also another link to um, recruit fundraising champions. So you can have that information for you um, for your organization as well. It, it looks like this is Stephen from the center. It looks like I think um, everybody, it looks like we have one more question about good uh, keywords to highlight um, that potential donors might use in searching. Um, so people probably are not going to be searching in Google for this. For this, um, I would say you're going to want to add, so when, sorry, I'm going to go to the giving page to show this off real quick. So the giving page, it's not, you won't have to do this to get to donate. But I wanted to show you the flow of how donors are going to find your organization. So I'm on here just as a New Hampshire resident and I want to give back. Click on this Give Back button and I'm going to search. Okay, so I'm going to search for dog. Here we go. So I'm searching for any organization that helps dogs and I have Logan Pups in the Animal Rescue League. But if I put an animal, um, we have a humane society. So maybe the, the um, Pacheco um, Valley Humane Society add in to the different animals that they help. Because those are the things that people are going to search for. They might search for animal. They might search for cat. Um, they might search for dog or fish or bird, something like that. Um, so that, but also with the causes, I mean, I can go ahead and I can choose causes. So if I care about animals or education, these are the organizations that are going to show up. No one has chosen education yet, um, maybe environment. Oh, get rid of dog first. Mm -hmm. That'll help. There we go. <laughs> so I can also search by causes. So that's how causes will help. 
Um, but again, make sure in your About Us that you include those different keywords you might want people to search for. So if you are known as, I think someone wrote in this morning and they were known as g.a.l.a. If I search for gal, it's not going to show up. But their official name is the g.a.l.a. So make sure in your About Us, you're going to want to add in anything that your, that your um, supporters might, um, might search for. Um, how do similar organizations appear at the bottom of my posting? I'm not entirely sure what the repeat giving. Maybe? If this is so, if this is about the repeat giving, I think that's what this might be about. Um, that's through the causes. So, if I'm looking for environment cause and I gave to a child's nature care and education, I might get the causes of the Lake Association, the Global Awareness, um, Local Action, and maybe Rochester Main Street because they chose environment as one of their causes. Um, is there a fee to keep our profile on New Hampshire Gives after New Hampshire Gives Day? Absolutely not. To sign up for New Hampshire Gives Day or to use GiveGab after the day of, there is no cost associated with it. Again, the only cost is around those per donation fees um, that we mentioned before. Um, does each organization have a specific link that we can send to our constituency? Yes. So that link. It's going to be just like this link right up here. New Hampshire gives up org slash organization slash the name of your organization. So you can just use that link to send it out to your um, people. Um, we had a question about the sample CSV file. Um, I can see if I have a sample one. I don't want to send out CSV files that belong to other organizations um, just because of the privacy around them. But um, we can send you at least the columns that are included um, just so that you can um, see what you can use to upload your CSV. We have a question, so it's automatic. Yes, um, so those causes, when I add a cause, it's just it's added automatically. It's just it's been a random, a random collection of Again, if I donate to an environment um, cause-based organization, it's going to be a random through organizations that share that same cause just automatically. Um, so is there a resource that helps identify keywords donors might look for? Um, not quite. I mean, it, it is going to be very much unique to each organization. Um, so again, if you, for a, a child's nature, care, and education, they're going to just use the keywords that really describe their organization. So if you put in a great about us, you know, it's going to include already those keywords that people are going to be searching for. Um, and again, keep it simple um, in terms of keywords. Because again, if I'm searching for animals, I might search for like, I care about dogs. So you know, just include things like that. Yeah. Um, so there's a question about the donor prizes. I'm going to um, send that over to New Hampshire Center for Nonprofits to answer if they would. Um, I know they're the ones that are really working with those sponsors to get those prizes together. Sure. We do not have a. We're keeping it highly secret. Um, we, we don't have the list ready yet, um, but it will be prizes like for the largest number of donors during a specific time period. There will be some um, quote unquote golden tickets um, that will be randomly one donor will be chosen and whatever organization that they gave to um, will be awarded the prize. Um, there are no prizes for donors. There are only prizes for nonprofits, um, but some of them are determined by um, total number of donations, total dollars. Um, during a specific time period or throughout the whole campaign. Very great, thanks. Um, when will the donate button go live? Um, I'm not sure that this has been decided yet, um, but we will let you know when it does happen, um, when that donate button is live. Um, it is a 24-hour challenge, so you know we are encouraging that most, if not all, donations do come in on that day of. You may want to seed your organization you know, a day or two before, so when people come on to donate, it's on the big zero. Um, but again, really focus on June 7th as New Hampshire Gives Day to collect those donations. And again, it's, it's a 24 hours, so 12 a.m. on June 7th through 11.59 p.m. again on June 7th. All right. 
I think that might be all of our questions. Um, Sunil Hampshire Center for Nonprofits wants to add anything, feel free. Um, I think that kind of covers everything we wanted to cover today. Again, if you have any other questions, please reach out to us using this great little button down here in the corner. Um, send us a message and we'll be happy to help you out. Again, within five to ten minutes during business hours. We want to thank GiveGab for going over all of this information. It's a ton of information, and don't worry if you didn't get it all. Um, you'll be getting emails once you sign up um, on New Hampshire Gives. You'll be getting emails with instructions and checklists, and um, we're going to try to make this as easy for everybody as possible and as fun. So um, try not to stress about anything. Um, it'll all be made apparent, even if you didn't get it all today. Um, thank you to Alyssa and Bridget and Casey. Um, you guys are awesome, and I encourage you, if you have any questions about the platform, to use that um, that button on New Hampshire Gives um, where you can talk to them because they're very knowledgeable and are very responsive. Thank you, Deborah. And I want to add, yes, this is going to be a fun and exciting day. Yeah, there might seem like a lot of work going into it, but I mean, this is a day all about New Hampshire nonprofits, and you should be really, really excited um, and have a lot of fun on this day. Because I think that's probably one of the most important things to keep in mind is this is a fun day, it's a celebration of, of all of you. I think that concludes our presentation. Again, if you have any questions, let us know, and I hope you all have an awesome Wednesday afternoon.